Oh, you have the recording going? <laughs> the recording happens almost immediately. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Welcome back, students. Nice to see you again. Thank you. Thank you. I was watching something. I can't watch the evening news at the moment. I just can't. So I, I go to YouTube and choose something at random. And the random yeah. thing that popped up was a ferry journey between Denmark and Iceland. Oh, ah. so much better <laughs> than the coronavirus. Mm. That's much yeah. better than the news. And you can always yeah. pop into webheads. I like cheer you up. I knew this was happening later. I've just been watching a uh, train travel from the the south of uh, Norway to the to the um, polar circle. I do it. Hi, Sus. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, and you? Fine, thank you. Who is speaking? Sue. This is Rita Sue's from Argentina. Oh, Rita. Ah, you Rita, can't, sorry. You can't see you. Can we see you? See you. We can hear you. Uh, Hi, yes. Rita. There's Rita. I see her. I don't see. There she I is. Hi, Rita. There you are. Oh. Hi, Rita. Hello. Hi, Rita. More people are arriving. Helene is arriving. Uh -huh. This is just a party. Sadat is arriving. I was just in Sadat's chat a moment ago. He was uh, teaching a class and he asked me to come and talk about webheads. And speaking of that, as long as I'm actually able to talk here, wonderful. Let me tell you where we are. Uh, this is Webheads in Action, one of our regular weekly meetings that have just started again. And uh, sort of running this through the auspice of something I call Talon, Teaching and Learning in Isolation. Uh, I'll put a link up there in a little bit or impose a screen share or something. But basically, it's just a, an informal group that Michael actually suggested because being a webhead and liking to chat, and that's how we got to know each other. We used to do this with students in 1998. Eventually, that uh, evolved into Webheads in Action, which was a, um, a, um, an EVO, Electronic Village Online group. And that was in 2002. So um, at that time, we met for uh, probably about five, ten years, something like that, uh, regularly meet regular meetings. And uh, uh, in 2010, I started something called Learning Together. And I've been sort of doing my meetings just in Learning Together. They, they start happening on Sundays. They stop started happening just about any time. And... Um, but anyway, so this is a learning together event as well. Anything I do online is a learning together event if I record it and host it. And this is learning together event or episode number 446. 446. Okay, so uh, 446 of them since 2010. And um, shooting for 500. And... Um, and this is uh, the fourth, no, the 6th of April, uh, 2020. And I always like to say that for posterity in case anybody comes upon this recording in a time capsule or something and they wanna know, they wanna know <laughs> where, where did it happen. Okay, so anyway, here we are. So we're all in isolation, I suppose. Anybody getting well, out and having quite. fun? <laughs> From tomorrow, they're going to invoke it in Japan, it seems. Ah, okay. Yeah, and it's just starting to get, but up till now, you've just been out wandering around and... Uh, no, but I've been going out to local, go out. local restaurants and uh, uh -huh. okay. going to my club and swimming, mm -hmm. which I won't be able to do now. Yeah, yeah. They've chained off our swimming pool hard now. to replace. Mm. I would say before we get too involved in anything, I have one topic I'd like to bring up sometime during the session, and that is some of you might have seen it, um, a posting about what various universities, um, what sort of problems various universities are encountering, encountering uh, due to suddenly having to teach online. Has anyone seen that posting? I, I put it on uh the tsol call interest section i can share it with you on a screen here if you want but it doesn't have to be right now vance you're in control or michael 
You're in control. You have a screen share option. Well, that's true, but I don't want to force myself upon you if you've got other stuff you want to do. Well, let's see who's here. Let's see. Lorena is here. She's to my... Uh, Lorena, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi. Well, I'm, I'm connecting from London, from South London, but see, well, I have a lovely sunny day today. It's helping a lot the weather, actually. We're having a really nice at the moment, so I don't, feel, I don't think people feel so claustrophobic indoors. We have gardens. We're allowed to go to our allotments. So uh, we see that allowed, which has been amazing. So, I mean, for me, the quality of life is better than the usual London life, which is pollution and uh, crazy. So I think we're slowing down. It's good for everyone. But of course, I'm from Madrid, and I have huge concerns over my family there, and also people here. Um, so the challenges are kind of in our minds. But basically, we can actually go out and be on the sunshine in our gardens. Uh, I'm very excited about many teachers considering online learning as a good option <laughs> because they don't have any other choice. But uh, I think it's, it's very important that, that people rethink about technologies and how to use it for community and for supporting, cooperating instead of education being so competitive in London. It's quite a monopoly in education with private schools. So I think there is hopefully it's going to be a rethink about all this. And I want to keep going and offering workshops online. So I'm switching everything online. So I'm quite busy at the moment, but quite, you know, it's a, it's a very interesting moment in history. I think some people are thinking about the Spanish flu, you know, the things that people did at the time. And apparently it's called the Spanish flu because Spain was the only country where uh, we were allowed, uh, people, my grandparents were allowed to, it was not censored, the topic of the flu, whereas in Europe was. So there was the only place where newspapers could talk about it. And that was what is called the Spanish flu anyway. But uh, I'm reading about what they did at that time. And it's very much what we're doing at the moment. That's Okay. So, Lorena, you're originally from Spain. Everyone yeah. opens their chat because we don't have a hands up routine in this tool and it's very difficult to turn take. So, if we use the chat session to say some of the things we would like to say, and we can address questions to people putting things in the text chat. But, Tom, just to follow up your question about what universities are doing, I don't know whether it's useful, but it's certainly interesting. My son has just completed the first week of his life teaching online at a university. He lectures in architecture and he's managing pretty well, but he said something really interesting last night. He said, administration needs to know that with all these people like him who are brand new to this realm and this way of teaching, there's no way we can achieve the same standards that we have achieved for the last several years. And is that being noted anywhere that we can't possibly reach the same standard because everybody's new at this game? Yeah, it seems like a no brainer. He's just concerned that it's not being talked about. What the web heads have always known is that you can't count on the technology. <laughs> You've always got to have another way to go, another plan or two or three. And you can't do in your online class what you do in your physical class. It's a lot different. And another complaint I've been hearing lately is that uh, especially people who uh, uh, have more than one child in one house competing for one computer, that sort of thing. And um, even if it's just one child getting overwhelmed by all these teachers expecting to do this, that, and, and the other problem of no child gets ahead because people are complaining because people without access or um, are, um, what do you do about them? Do you slow everybody up or do you, you know, anyway, that's a problem. Some people don't have access. So there's three, three little problems right there. Shared this. Is this Tom? 
Yes, there's information there on various countries on some of the issues that have been flagged. Make sure you put, if you share something, make sure you put its URL in the text chat. So, that, because we'll, we'll have a, we'll have the accompanying uh, text chat. This may not have a URL. It looks like it's in mail. It's yes. Oh, okay. Well, all right. We'll take a screenshot. I saw Chris Fry taking a screenshot a moment ago. Yes, that, that was a, a kind of screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I guess it works. It's certainly not intrusive to take such a screenshot. Well, I don't know, I'm a little, having trouble reading this. Uh, maybe you could okay. control plus and make it larger. I guess uh, this is about schools when I read about the UK, because um, at the university in the UK, uh, people have been getting their lesson, I mean, the, the straight lectures online for ever such a long time. I see, you know, I mean, really oh, over five, six years. So, uh, I mean, it's just by someone at the university. I was very surprised. I'm trying to remember how long ago she had as she went along all her lectures added onto a site. So I don't think it's a, whereas here it's saying high levels of anxiety in staff and students. Um, I tried to make it, make it a little larger and I can post a URL later, but yeah, this is just uh, from an email. There's um, the Philippines situation here, uh, basically bandwidth and uh, boring long lectures on tape. Mm -hmm. Australia, three uh, campuses degrees offered in partnership with the public university. Again, bandwidth was the main problem. Kern's challenge is figuring out assessments and practical classes. They use Blackboard. Switzerland, priority has been for health and safety of students, uh, struggling to adapt more than students are. The staff is struggling to adapt more than the students are and have needed lots of support. Is uh, anybody surprised? And then UK, one public university experiencing some very high levels of anxiety, of both staff and students. Students have lost lots of part-time jobs. Uh, Counseling hotline added for uh, students. Traditional lectures are way too long when online. Staff have realized that they need to split into 15-minute learning by uh, chunks. And then Macau uh, have been teaching online for two months and now see that most uh, will not return to face-to-face -face teaching uh, for exams. Staff has been given clear directions on which online tools they can opt to use, so they don't have any choice. Oh, we wouldn't like that, would we? Um, Regarding a cow, uh, when my neighbor up the street um, teaches in Macau, and that explains why he's been home in the United States, <laughs> because they're teaching online. His oh. wife and daughter live here, and he lives in Macau. <laughs> So I'll, I'll get a URL from this. This was uh, provided by someone at Sunway uh, University in uh, Malaysia. Okay, that's about all I have to say. Uh, I'll, I'll put a URL online after I manage to make one. Well, I just, uh, I just saw Vicky's um... She's teaching primary school at the moment, and I guess she was about to say that she's having some different issues. Do you want to elaborate? Uh, yeah, sure. Hi, everybody. Hi, Vicky. Uh, <laughs> so, um, essentially, we um, I teach the whole of primary school. I, I, I'm an, a, digi a digital projects teacher. <laughs> I work in collaboration with the classroom teachers to do online stuff. Uh, and, um, well, suddenly we were thrown at the deep end, well, not me, but most of the teachers to try to re to convert all their, their teaching to online. Uh, so we were using a platform provided by Santillana, um, which we had already, but they weren't using much. So they had to, 
uh, learn really, really fast how to use it properly. And then we had the, uh, the school decided that they wanted to have uh, synchronous sessions at least once a week um, to help the children to create this classroom atmosphere because the, the primary kids were feeling uh, were really feeling it really hard being being at home and not being able to see their classmates and the teachers and so on. So the teachers were receiving lots of messages about this. So the school decided to do at least a weekly Zoom meeting with the classes, uh, which worked really well. But of course, for let's say year one, two, three, six to eight year olds, uh, they cannot go on to their Zoom sessions on their own. <laughs> so they're usually uh, accompanied by their parents. So that means that the parents have to be free at that time. Uh, and, uh, and that's really difficult because parents are mostly also working from home in this situation. Uh, so I think that for very young learners, uh, the use of, of technology uh, is a way, of course, but it has many other implications, uh, uh, especially uh, their parents being with them while they access the technology most of the time. And Vicky, you're in Argentina, right? Yes, I'm in Buenos Aires. Do the kids focus as they're supposed to on the lessons or I, mean, I was working uh, well, at a place the where... First, mm -hmm. The first meeting was just a conversation with the teacher to find out how they were uh, managing their lockdown and what they were doing and a chance for them to speak and to say hello to the teachers and the other classmates. Uh, the second meeting uh, already had some uh, classroom teaching, if you want. Uh, so the teacher devised some uh, ideas uh, to do online and um, so some of that happened and today in the afternoon we are having the next meeting so I don't know what will happen, we'll see. Uh, what kind of platform, platform do you use Vicky? We, we are using Zoom despite all the, the negative <laughs> yeah, backlash in the last week. <laughs> right, but just for the oral type of communication, what happens with the written part? Uh, well, we have a, a learning platform uh, uh, by Santishana, Santishana mm -hmm. Compartir. So all the written work is being shared through the platform and the students are doing their tasks and, and, and handing, handing that in through the platform. So all the written part is covered there. Of course, some oral tasks are also set through the platform and students send recordings, for example, older students. But right. uh, what we felt as a school is that we still needed some synchronous contact with the children to ground them. Yeah. I see. Why haven't you chosen Google Classroom? Because, because you have to speak to, to Santiliana. Uh, well, yes, we, we, the school was already paying for Santillana oh, so, uh, and, and they had all their kids already enrolled in it, so it was much right, faster. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. It had already been done. Yes. I haven't seen Hala in such a long time, and I didn't even know where she is. Where are you, Hala? Hello, everybody. Hi, Hala. Hi. Hello. Nice mm -hmm. Nina, Kili, Vance, Harita, Michael, Terezinha. How are you, Susan? I'm so happy to see that. How are you? Uh, Tom, uh, Chris, how are you? Uh, I was so impressed by your experience, Lorena. How are you? Welcome to WebHex. Hi, Aiden. Aiden, how are you? Yeah, Nuruddin, Salaam Alaikum, how are you? Thank you so much, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm so happy to be here. Uh, I just need to uh, um, share the school's experience with uh, Vicky. 
My and daughter Hala. Is in, where, yeah. where are you, Hala? Are you in Sudan? I'm, I'm in Bahrain. Ah, in Bahrain. In Bahrain. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bahrain. I moved from mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia to Bahrain. This is my uh, sixth year now. Um, I had to call my daughter, my uh, 10 years old. She's a web head to, to show me how <laughs> to move around Zoom. She's nine. She's not 10. She's, she's pointing. <laughs> So um, um, I'm teaching uh, in Bahrain Teachers College, University of Bahrain. It's the only national university in Bahrain. I teach uh, at the English department, uh, teaching teachers, pre-service teachers. Um, I don't have educational technology course as I used in Saudi Arabia, uh, where I was the hero there. Uh, but I, as you all know, we, we, we cannot tempt, uh, uh, it's, it's very tempting uh, to use technology everywhere. So, and this is what I'm doing, but we're not using Zoom at the university, we're using Teams. Microsoft, mm -hmm. uh, we, we uh, completely instructed not to use WhatsApp, um, any other learning management system, but Teams, I think they pay for that, so they want to use it. Um, some of the faculties use Blackboard, but for our faculty, we use mainly Teams and all the apps in, in Teams. But that's another, uh, uh, another experience. I would like just to share the, the school's uh, experience with Vicky. Maybe she will find it uh, helpful. We, the closure started in Bahrain two months. So we were one of the first uh, uh, countries in the Arab region to stop. Uh, schools and universities. So we had this period of the 10 days, uh, almost uh, exactly 14 days, two weeks, not knowing what to do. But um, thankfully, the schools started to, to do this very powerfully. Uh, for example, my, my daughter's school, after two weeks, they sent a schedule for classes using Zoom and Google Classroom. So they put everything on Google Classroom and for the synchronous meeting, they use Zoom. They have the IDs. Uh, five days ago, they started to add uh, passwords because of the security issue with Zoom. So they sent us the schedule, each class with IDs and password. All the students need to do is to copy, paste and join the meeting. Uh, after the meeting, all the uh, 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 assignments are put uh, in Google Classroom. They gave the, the students one week to uh, submit all uh, assignments and requirements so they can use that for uh, writing a school report because we don't have final exam now. Final exam have been uh, canceled. So and they count the attendance. Uh, and the synchronous meeting, actually my daughter enjoys this and they do have even classes for PE. Uh, uh, I like that, yeah. And today they are, what they're, she's doing, she's, uh, uh, she's, she's, she's crafting a, a fish now using color um, papers because they have arts class today. So all the classes now they have synchronous uh, meetings and she finds that very, very useful. And it's very good even for, you know, the sleeping time. So she wakes up play, uh, early, have breakfast, and start preparing for the classes with the schedule beside her. I think, I think uh, this is useful for, and, and the feedback from the parents uh, is, is very positive. positive. Yes, I think that keeping a routine is very important. But as I said, sometimes that clashes with uh, uh, small households and only one computer available and parents working from home. So uh, it depends a lot on, on the particular situations of families. Yeah, we, um, had to borrow, we had to borrow a laptop <laughs> because <laughs> I didn't have the budget to buy one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What, I'm, what I find is happening here in France is that the teachers are actually finding their feet on the amount of work they can ask. I'm talking about secondary school and also the primary school teachers. 
they have um, an in-house online platform and at first all of the teachers were giving the normal amount of work they would do in class and everyone said ah you know this doesn't work so now they they're taking it down it's um it's not online teaching, but it's online communication with the program. Why do you think um, you can get less done all online? Because you don't have all the, all the other stuff that's involved with going to school. So I, I believe that it's true. I'm not surprised but I'm, I'm wondering why that would be. Well, that is actually the point of view of the teachers because there is such a variety of students. And I don't know why individually the, teach, the students are, are doing less. I have uh, one of my families is entirely homeschooled and has always been homeschooled. And it's true that they get through the schoolwork they did no schoolwork before they wanted to do exams. And then they said, okay, I want to do that exam. And woof, they did the work in, in one year uh, instead yeah. of three. It was uh -huh. amazing, amazing. But yeah, anyway, but okay. I, I suppose that it, it depends on the learner. It depends yeah. on the whole situation. Depends on a lot Many of people for one computer. Right. I, I think there should be a change of paradigm, change of the way that, uh, you know, school is not home. And this is not home education. We've been home educating for three years. This is not our reality. And I think there, there are a lot of experienced home educators that can bring a lot of information and uh, through uh, to, to teachers. And I think that's important that teachers can listen and follow. There is a very good podcast that is going to start from Ken Robinson. He's starting this to help families cope with this new situation because really it's more to deal with the well-being of the children than any other subject or academic learner. So if the children are happy, well, and they're not scared, well, I think that's the learning. And I think at home, I mean, if this is not the school, and you cannot, you should not bring the teaching and help in the school to a home or an online learning, because actually a six-year-old child is learning better, you know, by, by just uh, like uh, food or eat healthily, or keep, you know, active, um, just helping, you know, to make a recipe to measure <laughs> his maths as well. So we need to change the paradigm. We cannot bring like you know nine to ten months and i think that would be a shame and um can you hear me i think it's a lot going on <laughs> so i think it's important to listen to people that for any reasons have decided to home, home educate education have different approaches and it's not one way you know one only way for all uh, the first difference for me i school-based uh, teacher uh, and teaching Spanish in primary schools. I, I didn't know the names of the children. There were so many. And how, every half an hour I have to change classroom. Now, I wouldn't imagine to do that um, now online. Um, so that's why I'm doing all the projects and I've been quite for a long time doing this because I'm fascinated about the information and the creativity, the amount of approaches as types of families, the types of approaches and as types of children. And I, I see children really young from six, seven years old, self-managing their learning. And it's amazing. It's what I used to do when I finished university. And, and I think we should trust a little bit the young people to decide what they're interested in, and then to assist learning, instead of impose uh, a curriculum. And the good thing about the UK is that children are not at the school, it's up to the parents to decide that they follow a fixed curriculum or not. I mean, uh, that would be a shame because uh, to have to follow the curriculum and to do classroom at home, that's like a prison, to be honest. That's, that's unfair uh, to a six-year-old. You know, they are not in the school. 
So why don't you I'll take a long holiday and enjoy <laughs> being outdoors in your garden, doing plants, put words in the plants. I mean, just feel good. And I think that's already a learning. You know, well-being is a, is a really important skill to have in life. And things that you would not do at the school. You know, be creative as a teacher. And, and really follow the blogs from other schoolers I mean, as, as much as you don't agree with that approach, just listen to some of the things they do, or if you really consider flex schooling might be also a good option for some children. The reality we have in the schools is secondary, which is the, what I, I was supporting um, when uh, four or four years ago, is that there's a huge crisis in mental health in young people. Uh, and that was before um the coronavirus started right and that's due to the exam system um so we have this now where there are no exams people are feeling much better because of that young people so you know that's not there and uh and uh, since i don't prepare exams i found myself without having clients so people want to just uh, have se spanish lessons for the test but now you take the test the assessment test away they no longer want to learn the language so uh, the last three years i've been meeting people working in democratic schools um in in all sorts of personalized learning where actually the the child's voice is heard and I think that's very important because when you listen to the child then they're really motivated to be in designing games playing with Lego uh, cooking creative writing reading books I mean my own daughter which has never done a reading scheme in English she reads all sorts of, of amazing um, books about dragons and legends so and I never taught her to read um, so but she can read so it's things that they, they, we don't trust. I mean, she, she only learn how to work without teaching them. And I really generally think that if we're in a literate uh, household where we can actually use technology, read, write, and they will learn alongside. So yes, I think teach less, I kind of assist the learning more. That's the approach I, I think from home. From us is working beautifully. So this is the change is that my, we can now go ice skating which is our passion. <laughs> so we kind of go to the ice rink a little bit, and we're finding ways to keep fit. So we're doing a lot of yoga sessions, live yoga sessions online, and also ice skating off ice training. So we keep uh, doing that, that side. is more important than any academic learning at the moment. But yes, uh, home, home schoolers, which is a very specific approach as well. We do better academically with academic learning, that's for sure. Um, so I, I think it's, it's good and it's not like forever. So children can go back to school whenever they want to uh, and then take a, maybe a year in home education if you're, they want to take more advantage of the, of the of, you know, in London we have so many places to learn. And I wonder they, if we can hear something from Seuss about um, her students have to Renee. make their own personal schedule. Yes, Celestine Frenet. This is someone who's asked for more information about that in the text chat. Are you are you ready to tell us, Suze? Uh, yes. Um, wait a moment. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. Here. You can hear me. Yes, yes. you can hear me. I, um, from from many years, I've been interested in a, a very special form of school. Um, called uh, Frenet schools and um, it, the idea is that children should learn from their own interest complex and that they can they can actually make their own schedule and I'm so lucky that my my granddaughter who is age, uh, eight years old she is now in, in a school like this and she is doing amazingly well she, she makes her own schedule day for day and she knows what she wants to do so she, she is busy all the time and uh, one important point is reading for the teddy bears or, or making a, a theater for the teddy bears or making a, she can bake she can bake her own uh, cakes and muffins and she can dictate the recipes uh, to me on telephone so i can write them down um i don't have i don't see her because she's uh, far away from where i live but we have uh, lots of interesting and fun uh, telephone talks, not on video, just voice talks 
uh, old fashioned. Um, she, she really, really enjoys not being in school uh, for many reasons. <laughs> you she, said she, she designs her own, uh, her own uh, learning her own plan? Learning. And she knows that she, what she's doing. She she knows what she needs, uh, and she um, she can she, she can sit now with uh, an atlas to look at maps, and then uh, half an hour later she will ask her mother, uh, "Is it really true that there are uh, cities with uh, 11 million inhabitants?" Which means mm -hmm. she's going into details with information on these maps, and she's only eight, eight years old, so. I think it's it's uh, it's very good. Of course, she she needs to go back to school, and um, I it's it's a, it's a school where the little ones in uh, in from six years they they are in one class, and then they are distributed into three classes where they are from uh, grade one to grade six, which means that she has classmates who are actually thirteen years old, and I asked her after fourteen days. What what do you think about going to school with uh, uh, kids that are so old? It is just amazing, she said, with, with a broad <laughs> smile because she loves it. They are not limited to their own level. They they can they can go ahead and as she is uh, uh, a, a fast little learner with a lot of imagination, she she has many uh, playmates among the the bigger kids. Mm. It's very interesting to follow how she's doing, she's dealing with that. I just uh, uh, bought her a sewing machine because she can sew. So now she can begin to sew at home her own uh, interesting uh, inventions, textile inventions. That's fascinating. Um, Can I ask the name of your, uh, of the school? What the school? My name. Sorry? What's your question? The name of the school? I, I wrote it in. I wrote it in in the the, the chat. It is a, a French uh, school system, almost a hundred years ago. It was um, the story of uh, a post-war uh, uh, veteran who came home to, and uh, was sent to a remote village school in Provence, where uh, everything was totally in, in, in disorder. There were many fathers uh, and, and sons gone and, and uh, of course after the first first world war everything was chaos so he had to find new ways to 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 make these children want to learn something and what he, he discovered was that they 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 really desire to learn so you do not have to impose knowledge on them you don't need to to tell them exactly what they can do. They can make their own, um, they make their own books. They also read other books, but they do make their own books from, from very early on. Uh, and uh, he, he was also, he was very early to embrace technology, by the way. Uh, first of all, he's famous for having made a little printing uh, system so that, that they could print before they could, could write their own letters. They could actually make a set of a, a line of the printed types, so they could print their own books. I'd like, to, I'd like to. I'd like to ask uh, because time is limited. And I'd like to balance this a little bit. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to hear from Carla because we haven't heard from her in such a long time. She's in Brazil, where they're having. I don't know what situation is there, but I mean, I read the yeah. news. But anyway, uh -huh. she's director of a language school uh, in uh, uh, Brasilia, the capital. Still, I suppose. Not anymore, oh, yes, no. Vince. Okay. Not anymore. Update yeah. me. Um, I left Casa Thomas Jefferson like uh, three years ago, and now I have my own company. Oh, uh, wow. Yes, yeah. yeah. called uh, Amplifica, which is Amplify uh, <laughs> in English. So, um, well, I've been uh, running this business like for three years with a partner, Samara. And it's all about, you know, uh, technology, education and all that. But uh, here in Brazil, the situation is all over the place is kind of scary. But uh, a lot of work to do with, uh, it seems that like the world has stopped so that everybody can learn about technology. That's my feeling. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like, let's 
pause everything. Now everybody needs to do something about uh, technology. Everything that you haven't learned before, that's the time. <laughs> and I, I have this feeling. So everybody's looking for help and many teachers are really desperate and, you know, trying to adapt. I think this is uh, a general issue for everybody. But then one thing that I just want to mention here is a big uh, project, national project that I am involved in, uh, like through Amplifica, which is like taking our uh, time here, a uh, whole time. We are working like 12, 12, 14 hours a day to try to deliver uh, this uh, content. And the idea is that uh, as teachers are not able to adapt so fast to online learning, what we are uh, like, there is this big uh, nonprofit foundation in Brazil called Lehman Foundation, which is huge here. So we are partners and they hired us to, uh, in fact, create content for the students. So we are going to reach the students through digital platforms and different ways, not just uh, like uh, the traditional ones like, uh, you know, Google Classroom and sites and all that, but also through uh, the way that we communicate the most through um, cell phones, mobile devices and through uh, WhatsApp and all that. So what we are doing now, we had a selection of teachers nationwide, Brazilian teachers, and we have specialists from uh, first grade to ninth grade. And then we have like two weeks to uh, prepare this content, but it's not like uh, they're not going to have like classes with us. They're gonna have like uh, learning experiences and uh, what we are doing is like we are creating this system that we have like uh, two different learning experiences a day for each level, for each um, age level. And, and we are going to make it available to all districts like uh, education districts in Brazil and all, um, and it's not, just the district. So if there is a school that doesn't have the support from the district, the school can request the, this content. And also if the, if the teacher is alone, the teacher can also request this content and we are going to replicate it through Google Classroom and Google Sites so that it makes like really accessible in, in many different ways. So that's the news and this is something we are working hard, hard and very proud of because I think we are gonna have like a, a great reach. And the idea is also through this content, we can also help teachers develop professionally because we are gonna have like a kit for them and also help them um, understand how they can build these capsules of learning uh, through this whole experience. That's the idea. Great, Carla, impressive. Congratulations yeah. on starting your own company. Yeah. Yeah, that Scary, sounds but impactful. Yeah. It sounds like yeah. a big project. <laughs> it is. And you're the right person to do that. Wow. I have a, I don't know. I have a question, Carla. <laughs> yes. Is it for all the subjects? Yes. Yes. So we have wow. uh, we have to select. Oh, it was great. It, it is totally yeah. insane to do that. Because what we did was is we had a, a nationwide selection of teachers in 24 hours and we had 2000 uh, applicants there and uh, we had we had a whole system to select them we developed like some time ago we developed uh, what we call uh, a digital fluency index that we did that like at amplifica and then we use that to select the teachers as well as like as well as their portfolios and all that. So now we are working with uh, with an academic coordination plus uh, around thirty teachers for all subjects. Oh come on! What's in your digital fluency index? What sort of things are you looking at to decide? Hey, Elizabeth, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, we created something going like five levels of digital fluency. Oh, uh, is, it is still in Portuguese, but uh, it's something I could really translate it to English. 
and we go from like a very basic things that they can do with the computer up to what we call flow where the teacher really do what we do here like uh, sharing participating in in uh, conferences presenting conferences so there are all these um we created like some rubrics and then the teacher decides where he is or where she is and and it's it's really interesting and it has been helpful in this situation because we didn't have the time to teach technology for those specialists so we needed two things we needed teachers who were specialists in content and technology uh, so that we could mm -hmm. really go fast because we have two weeks to deliver the whole package. Uh, I, I just, I just, hi Carla, how are you? Hey Hala. How are you? I, 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 I am, uh, this is very interesting and uh, hopefully one day I can do that when I go back home to Sudan so I can invite you send you the, the ticket to come yeah. as a consultant. <laughs> but um, I, think, I think what you're saying is easier than you have uh, technology uh, experts, but they're not teachers. It's, it's, I think it's the, the, the bottom line of this online learning is the problem is the misconception of while I'm using Zoom, I, I know how to use this. I'm an expert in this technology. It's not about the technology. It's, no. it's really a tool. It's about the pedagogy. Uh, and, and how do we implement all what we know uh, in, in an online, uh, whether synchronously or asynchronously. So the problem is that this is uh, the culture here. They, they think it's about the tool. It's not about the tool. So what you're doing is, it, it, actually, it reminds me of Open University. You know how, how the Open University started? So I think this is, this is a very interesting and I hope, I hope it will be fruitful. Yes, in, in fact, there is something about, uh, and it's, for us, it's really not about the technology. We just needed uh, these teachers to be like a tech savvy because we are working like collaboratively and they, they need to know the tools even to help uh, students to get there and and the point is that what we are thinking is really uh, online uh, online activities no learning activities that they do offline so we need to deliver that online in different formats so it's gonna be in Google classroom Google sites PDFs so that it can be really uh, widely distributed but at the same time we need to guarantee that even the the students, for example, in the Amazon region that they don't have a uh, connection, that they can really get this package and they can work it like everything offline. So what we are trying to do here, we are going to have even the, the activities, they are like, um, uh, we, we have like some icons that we have for offline and online activities if you have access to technology, that's the idea. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, I think, uh, let's see, Noura Dean wants to ask a question to Carla. Can we have that? And then I want to speak to Lane. If I, can, I have an announcement about Lane. She's giving a webinar shortly. Susan has asked to say something about her university. So uh, those events are uh, on the schedule. So if you want to uh, say something in particular, put it in the text chat and we'll try to work it in. Uh, so, Nuruddin, did you want to ask Carla a question? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Vance. Mm -hmm. thank, uh, thank you, everybody. And I really enjoyed to uh, attend this uh, webinar, <coughs> this meeting. I just would like to ask Carla, if possible, to uh, uh, to tell me uh, how can we, as teachers from other countries, uh, benefit from uh, the program she is uh, she's now she's now uh, uh, taking. Yes, I think uh, one thing that we are really worried and we are doing this like uh, as part of the project is uh, registering all the process because it's, it's, it's huge in terms of even logistics. Like uh, we had to create a small framework for, for teachers so that they could start working on it. So we created the framework with five verbs that um, well, it's kind of complicated to explain it here, but I can I can share like the the 
uh, the spreadsheets that we created because for example uh, the framework with the verbs they uh, we are going to work with the UNESCO uh, sustainable goals uh, so this is one thing what we did was uh, we got those goals and divided we have two eight weeks of content for students so we got like two goals and and created themes so for each week they have themes and then uh from there we had to create those verbs to help teachers to design their their learning experiences for students so we have like verbs such as make observe explore connect and then we separated that for each teacher so we get together every day with them and then we prepare the weeks like everyone gets one uh, verb so that this is the focus of their learning experience so these kinds of things we can really share i i i, I hope i have time to write soon about it in english or maybe even like in in social media i could start writing in Portuguese and in English to help you out and then if you want um, I could share the the spreadsheet so that you understand what we are doing because uh, it's like a, a very comp not complex but uh, it's really we need to really plan things with a, a framework for the teachers yes and uh, the group is incredible like the, the academic coordination there Thank you, Carla. Thank you okay. so much. So uh, I just put a link in the text chat to Talon, which is tinyurl.com slash Talon2020. And the reason I'm doing that now, two reasons. One reason is that Carla or anybody here who has, uh, obviously there's a lot of expertise here and we're really just kind of brainstorming right now. But if you want to share more with us, you, could, you can uh, request access to that document and then write in on the schedule what you want to do and the date you want to do it. Because we're actually trying to, well, if you go and visit it, you can see that this is on the schedule and there are other things coming up. Uh, that, that's one thing. And, and then something that's coming up is Lane is giving a talk. She's put herself on the schedule for April 14th on SOFLA. Uh, Lane, please tell us what you're going to talk about. Okay. So, um, so I've been giving this, uh, this webinar to my local TESOL, uh, New York State TESOL. We have a crowdsource, I guess you'd call it Google Doc, where everybody, all the membership could just put the, the title of what they wanted to share and create a link in Zoom. And, uh, and there are tons of webinars. It's all us volunteering to do it. And it kind of exploded, like tons of people decided to volunteer. And so I volunteered also. Um, to do mine and they suggested to give them more than once. So I've already given this one twice. So I thought, why not give it again for you guys? You know, <laughs> right, <laughs> why give it to New York state members, you know? Um, so anyway, um, uh, so I'll, I'll give it, it's, um, what I do is uh, I do flipped learning. Many of you know, I've always talked about that now for the last several years, eight or 10 or whatever. Um, but I, I insist on the synchronous piece because I think it really, like we're doing right now, I mean, it's just priceless to have a synchronous piece. And uh, people have a lot of pushback. They, they don't want to do that. They say the whole point of online is you don't have to be there at a certain time and all this. And, but I developed a, a model called SOFLA. It's synchronous. It's just an acronym, but it's synchronous online flip learning approach. So, um, mm -hmm. but I have eight steps and I'll be going through the eight steps and why each step is important and what do you, what are the caveats for each step? And, you know, it's, you can watch the recording if you can't come to it. Um, and I think you'll enjoy it. For this audience, I think that a, a lot of it will be very familiar, except perhaps maybe just the way I kind of package it and a rationale that you might want to turn key for other people. You know, mm -hmm. but I think, you know, I don't talk that much about tools. Uh, I'm really focused less on that than on the rationale for the way the thing works. But uh, there's one tool that I do talk about, which I love, which is PlayPosit. And I don't know who uses it. 
but anybody who's play posit so play posit uh, there's a, the free version's pretty good, and the paid version isn't that costly. Which look? Play posit. P just P L A Y. Play posit, and uh, you can you 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 record your lesson, and then you embed interactions in it. You can embed video, audio, questions, anything you want to embed, and I'll be demonstrating that as part of the presentation. I think that. That's enough. I said enough. The only other thing I'd like to add is my university, can I say one thing quick about that, is that I happen to work at a campus where there are a lot of uh, old style, uh, walk in the room, lecture, give an exam, you know, <laughs> and they don't know what to do. So I'm their guide and I'm, I'm t they send me lecture notes to post or they talk into my uh, my cell phone and I record onto my computer their little lectures and I'm kind of running their courses for them and it's a little sad it makes me sad because they're wonderful professors but they just they have no idea how to do anything online and they never <laughs> they just never did and it's sad because they're brilliant you, you know they're brilliant in their field and I never really thought about it that way that people in that situation are kind of caught right now. That's all I want to say. Okay, uh, Susan asked to say something about developments at her university in Iran. And if anybody has uh, anything else me? they'd like to say, put uh, make a request in the text chat because I've probably missed it already. So if otherwise, we'll probably be ending soon because uh, we have dinner to eat here and some people have breakfast waiting. Some people probably have lunch. You guys, you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, Susan. Okay. All right. I'll be brief. Um, first of all, um, hi again, everybody. It's nice to see you. Um, I just wanted to um, share some good news I had about my university because, well, some of you know that uh, I was the first person to get call started in Iran. I after I had classes with Christine Bauer Amazoni, she was my first call teacher, and then I was introduced to the webs and the EBO. Um, and so anyway, I was the first person to introduce call to um, Iranian universities. And 13 years ago, we had the first call classes at my university, Azahar University. Um, then uh, first at PhD level, a few years after that at MA level. Uh, level. But that was just like a single course. Uh, and I'm happy to announce that our, um, well, I've, first of all, I've been doing my best to um, educate lots of other people so that uh, it would be continued in different parts of the country and to make sure that you know uh, it's followed up by other people and um, recently we have got the approval of the Ministry of Higher Education for a master's degree in call in Iran so um, hopefully from next year with the help of some of my graduate uh, the students my previous students have graduated and some um, of my colleagues were going to be um, initiating, starting the master's um, degree of call in Iran at my university, Azar University. Just that's all I wanted to share. And it's all down to you guys. So thank you all very much for teaching me everything. And uh, this is, you know, the result of your work. I'm being called the mother of call in Iran. It's, it's all because of first Christine wow. and then you guys. So thank you. Congrats, thank Susan. Thank you very much. Right. And, and when I see Susan at conferences, she's brought, she brings her students a lot and pays back the learning. We learn from those people as well. They're doing some phenomenal work there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, anyone who hasn't spoken would like to say hi. There's Helping North down there, Paula from Argentina and Aiden. Saw you with Sadat, who's left by now. Hi, saw you, she, she popped in over there. Yeah. Hi, Paula. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Very nice to see you mm -hmm. and okay. to learn about what's going on around the world. Yes. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Anne, we were talking with in uh, EVO just recently. She popped into the best of EVO. Uh, that's also archived at Talon if you want to go there and learn it together. And Aiden, anything, anything from you? you had to... Nothing. 
earth shattering. Well, I, I said some of those things already last year, but I would just like to say hi, hi to Carla, nice to see you, and all the new folks uh, who just dropped by this evening. Um, Vicky, so nice to see you. Um, it's about, I just had dinner, it's 9, 9, 9 p.m. Uh, my mm. time, so cheers, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Cheers. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Okay, to we'll come you. back and and also if you have anything you'd really like to share, just pop it into the Talon site because I'm hosting anything. Anything that goes in there, I'll make a learning together session out of it. And people have a lot of time on their hands when they're not developing online courses for all their students. Um, and there was Claire, and we saw Mark a moment ago, but he. Uh, he just popped in for a cameo. Get done mute if you're going to say anything. Yeah, he's very busy these days showing faculty how to teach online. Ah, mm. Mm. using mm -hmm. Zoom actually. <laughs> okay, and Chris mm -hmm. Fry down there. He's we're looking forward to seeing your screenshots <laughs> from Barcelona. Uh -oh. He doesn't. He doesn't know where he is anymore. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Okay. My my screen was just a, how the chat on an iPad occupies the whole screen and makes it unusable. Ah. Hence, using my mobile phone. Obviously, I'm I appear twice participants, so I'm using my mobile phone to follow the chat and participate in that and keeping my iPad uh, for, the, for the visual side. And it seems to work pretty well. Yes, okay, there you go. Multitasking, multi-devicing, multi-literate. Yeah. So, uh, okay, Michael, oh, Teresa, we didn't hear from Teresa. Nothing new here, just saying hello everyone. And it's great to have these chats again, 18 years later. I joined the Webheads in January. 2002, I mean, 22, and uh, it's just fabulous to, to be back with old friends, but uh, young at heart, right? <laughs> <laughs> that, that makes you a charter web head today. Yeah. <laughs> there she is. Teresa, I was just thinking that it was 20 years ago that you came and visited us. It was. It's been 20 right. years, 1,000, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Fantastic. Yeah, I was there for three weeks, right? Were you? Were I think you? it was three weeks. Uh huh. <laughs> at your house. <laughs> and your mother said you were crazy. You're gonna go <laughs> to the United States and stay with somebody you met on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, when were yeah. you? When were you once here in Buenos Aires? When was that? Two thousand and ten. Oh, mm -hmm. that's nine years ago already. And Michael was there. And uh, yes, we, and Carla, we met Carla there. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, Ann Fox, we we still don't have your voice. Go ahead and uh, do an I, outro I for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't really anything to say um, except it's lovely to see everybody, and um, I still do the absolutely intercultural podcast. So if anybody oh, has okay. any interesting. Uh, notes from the field that they think would make a, a, a good topic for the podcast, then I'm all ears. Just get in touch with me and I'd be very happy. Put the link in the text um, chat. Okay. Yeah, because everything that goes in the text chat gets put on the web. Not over there. Yeah. And Michael, you want to take us out of here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. Um, <laughs> well, either that or play us a song. No, we can't do that again. We get sick of it. Well, there's Maybe. another song. <laughs> I promise I won't dance this time. <laughs> it's lovely to see you all. It's been just interesting to hear what everybody's doing. I'm doing very little in the way of kind of proper work. Well, let's call it work. It's got to do with education these days. I'm doing lots of other things. So. I don't have a lot to input into the sorts of things that have been talked about for the last hour, but it's just nice to have a group of people together again. And, and listen, to be honest, just have a another hour in the day, which I don't have to think about what am I going to do now? I mean, I'm not the kind of person who gets bored, but because I'm at home all of a sudden, all day long, and I typically travel at least every few weeks somewhere, that's all 
you know, off the books. And so I just have to concentrate on the moment and be at home. And thank you for helping me get through another day. And I actually have adopted a little bit of the, uh, the Alcoholics Anonymous mantra. It's one day at a time. Mm -hmm. I think any further than that is just quite distressing. So my goal is to get up in the morning and make sure I achieve a few things before I go to bed that night. And it's almost <laughs> that time for me now. And tomorrow we'll start again. But yeah, it's one day at a time. But look, and up what happens a week from now? Sorry? A week from now. Think of that far ahead. What happens a week from now? Well, we well, didn't again. About another date, but... Um, <laughs> I, I'm not strictly kind of living. Uh, the 13th. Back today. Yeah, 13th. We, we might move it back to Sunday, didn't we? Uh, the week after. The week after, because uh, V pointed out that uh, next Sunday is um, Easter. So we thought we might not get people there. So we'll, we'll do it next Monday and then probably move it to Sunday. What do you think about that? Is it okay for everybody? Does anybody's Monday much better for some people or is it the same? If it's the Every same. day is the same in retirement. There you go. Retirement, <laughs> COVID-19. Every day is Sunday. Yeah, there you are. I, I don't even know what day it is. At least you know it's Sunday. So. Yeah, the problem is not knowing. <laughs> you miss stuff because you don't realize, oh, that was today? Really? So Sunday or Monday doesn't matter. I'm gathering. Yeah, it's okay with me. But anyway... Uh, I know what day it is because of my pillbox. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, well, I'd like to invite uh, Michael or anybody who will be available on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, um, 11 UTC, I think. That's, uh, that's about 7 p.m. my time. Or, or 8, let, let's make it a 12 UTC. Um, that's yeah. That's about 8 p.m. my time. I will be teaching a very small group of um, English learners. They're they're actually our national athletes. They're runners, so they're mm. um, they represent Taiwan for the Olympics. And the topic this coming Wednesday, it's about how they feel now that the Olympics has been canceled. Mm -hmm. So anyone who would like to join, um, I, I wasn't really planning of. Um, you know, asking them to chat online, but um, I'm, I just thought of, of that now. Um, yeah, so if you're free, you know, Michael on Wednesday, pop in just to say hi. I haven't even created a Zoom room for that, but I, that, that can easily be done. You know, just say hi, hello, and ask them how they feel, um, uh, you know, now that uh, the Olympics has been canceled. Because they've been training really, really hard. So it, it was a really, it's really um, a bit upsetting. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's only if you're free or anyone, any one of you who will be free on Wednesday. This can oh, be you can share yeah. later the name, yes. Say again? Or maybe you can share the information by the email so that we can schedule it. Uh, mm -hmm. Another possibility would be to go to that tiny URL. Yeah, yeah. Request access on that doc. Did you? Did you? Uh, the, 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 yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, if you, if you write in the information for the 11th, then okay. it will be there. I'll then enter it into Learning Together. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I would host it for you if you wanted. But, uh, no, okay. If you're not yeah. doing anything, probably just about 30 minutes. So I'll probably mm -hmm. do, um, you know, an hour and a half, you know, the usual class. Um, yeah, and then we'll spend about 30 minutes. 30 minutes or so just to ask them and you know they get to practice what they've learned okay uh by the way i'm uh, this is the evo 2020 uh zoom and i've set one up for talon so that's that in, so it'll be in the talon room on the, uh, the on wednesday but anyway if you put if you start the uh, the entry for the 11th then i'll fill it in and yeah it'd be really nice to host you and uh, yeah okay i'll, I'll do it yeah. okay great all right, so that's how that works, folks. If you got Hi. something you want to meet people, that's what we're doing this month. It's. Uh, I have a question, Mike. Can I? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you all to write in the chat your country and city, please? So to keep record, mm -hmm. I'd like to share this uh, with my uh, trainee teachers at Teacher Training College, and it will be very interesting to to have. 
that information as well. Thank you. Well, <laughs> yeah, I just now letting Heike into the chat room. I, I don't know how long she's been there. I've, I've been trying to keep on top of that, but <laughs> as we pulled to the top of the hour, I stopped looking over there. Yeah. Heike, hi, you have to write your city and your country in. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. And we have, for the record, we have, well, 21 participants in the room right now, but we had about 23, 25, somewhere in there. Right, yes, there were other people. Maybe 27, I don't know, anyway, I've, I've been taking some screenshots. Heike from mm -hmm. Heidelberg, okay. Yeah, I'm starting with my teacher training group next week. So um, one of the topics I've been dealing with is um, communities of practice, and of course, WebHeads is a great example. <laughs> Great. That's what Sadat was doing earlier today. He was uh, teaching about webheads. Yeah, and, he was. Uh, yeah. I, I couldn't join him today. Uh -huh. Yeah. Nice. Okay, Heike, if you'll pop into the, if you put a webcam up, I'll take a quick screenshot. Mm -hmm. There you go. All right. <laughs> okay, well, so everyone, goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Great week. Guys. Lovely to see Stay you. healthy. Have a good yes. day. Stay healthy. Bye. Okay. Bye, -bye. Bye. I'm kind of like the guy behind the camera. Every time that happens, I'm never waving. You know. I'm, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So anyway, thank you, everybody. And I'm just going to capture this image and. Uh, thank you, guys. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Thank Bye -bye. you. Great to see you all. Bye. Bye, -bye. See you guys next week. And Bye. The 11th, see you the 11th. Again. Yeah. <laughs> nice to see everybody. Okay. I'll turn off the recording. Bye bye. Oh, I always hit the recording where it says recording. I always hit that. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Bye bye, Susan. Ah, okay. Here it is. Stopping the recording. Good night. April 6th. 2020, Talon teaching and uh, teaching and learning in isolation and learning together, learningtogether.net. And uh, that's how we're spending our time in isolation. Bye bye.